now. This is the last session of the day. Uh, it's been a very, very active day. And I'm very pleased to be seated here with uh, Wesley Gottley, that we uh, learn to know each other for those uh, time that we, uh, we spend in uh, preparing this uh, wonderful event here in Milano. And what we would like to achieve uh, today is to give you um, a, a critical overview of what could be just the um, partnership between design and science. Um, so I will be starting with a few, uh, few slides. Uh, uh, for some of you that maybe <clears throat> know me, uh, that would be some kind of the uh, keynote I'm uh, very often sharing. But it's also an opportunity for us to have uh, an overview of what we try to achieve with this event, with Design for Life, and also to start and trigger the conversation and the dialogue with Wesley, and I hope, if we have a little bit of time, with you later on. So, um, Design for Life. Uh, design in the Edge Experience did basically build over a, a, a very important conviction, a conviction that I share as a designer, but also that we share within the Dassault system. And I would like to start as a typical French person with something a little bit philosophical. Uh, for some of you who knows the philosopher Baudrillard, is a French philosopher that have a theory of dis the disappearance or disparition. Or, and what it is is really about the fact that we are with the digital turn in that we can basically locate in around 1980, basically turning to a completely new time the era of simulation. Not simulation as probably we think multiphysics simulation, but on a bigger hem, our world is basically down from an hybridation of virtual and real. So it's basically the end of the production time, the end of the time where we were basically disconnecting design and art uh, to the science and technology. The time where standard was the pinnacle of everything we were doing and production in mass was just the only way to make profit. Something is changing. So today we wanted to tackle on the 17 sustainable goals of the ONU. Uh, it's also something that the World Design Organization is uh, taking as a main purpose for design. And this is also a very important transformation the design community is tackling. And we are today with Design for Life basically taking that particular climate change element of air pollution because this is something that makes perfect sense to do. Yet, it's also a wicked problem that we know. It's so complex that nobody really knows how to tackle it. So why not designers will be proposing and having some solution for it? So the big question is, can we design for life? This is a quite uh, also a difficult question to ask because it means that can we be gods and design life? Well, that's part of the conversation that uh, people are having with what we know that we're capable of doing. But definitely we know that we cannot live anymore in an unsustainable world. And with the digital turn, can we just continue to go with this era of production or starting to think to design for life? So uh, I was talking earlier about this era of simulation. Our world is uh, basically becoming very much hybrid and it's based on something that we see and not see dawn of very subtle interaction. They are also defining new territories, not territories as we know, the natural ones, you know, the one where we walk and uh, the field, but really territories that are layers of information on the top of our natural grounds. And those territories are completely transforming our reality and perception of reality. So something that we know for sure, for good or for not good, Science is everywhere. And with this, the digital turn, something also happens, is science is taking the forefront of any conversation. And sometimes to the detriment, to the common sense that design provides. So science is often seen as a much more buzzy topic than design. Not today. I'm glad for that. <laughs> so our bro not our world is basically like changing completely our social practice. And this is why 
we believe that there may be a possibility that we can design a desirable future, but the big bet we make at Dassault System and within our, our community of designers, leveraging technology, can we really design a desirable future? When it could be just maybe a nightmare. So the big question is how we will be basically converge with science. So the big question, and this is something we probably trigger uh, more in depth with uh, uh, Wesley, not only through your presentation as a very interesting and intriguing awareness experience and installation uh, that you did with Superflux, but uh, within the bigger aim, we discussed that about uh, urban mobility, about system, about how we will be embedded data in our journey. The question is really, can we design complex and can we design the invisible? That means if most of what we do is now gathered in uh, non-visible product or physical product, can we design them? Can we design with data? Can we consider all of the interaction that we are basically creating through our interaction with our hybrid virtual and real technology and device, internet of experience as we call it, can we actually consider this material, the data, as a material for design, but to design for life? So, as we know today, data is just everywhere. We are just basically creating a notion of data and we are basically, we can consider this is a info obesity. Uh, data is everywhere and they are sometimes more confusing things than clarify it. So the question is, it's not about the quantity of data, it's not about generating data, it's not about inventing all of the devices that will provide us even more knowledge, even if we should do it. It's really what we're going to do with it. What kind of meaningful purpose and how we will be structured that data in a way that it will very much support the perspective of getting just desirable living experiences. So when you look at what it's doing, business and technology, as I told you, is very much on the forefront. Why not talking about, but for what, for why, and for whom, the humans? So, what I want to get in here is the fact that design have a very specific mission. The mission to create adoption. The technology, they are coming up. Technology create technologies. One technology gets to another one. By the way, they are very nice uh, uh, topic from uh, Kevin Tully, Kelly, who write this book, uh, What Technology Wants. What is interesting is basically making the demonstration. A technology is just the creator the DNA of many others, and this is going to be like an organic growth. So the question is not just the technology. It's about how we will be feeling comfortable with this technology, how this technology will be meaningful enough for just being accepted in our uh, everyday lives. So what we need to do when it comes to design for life is to design for systemic and holistic purpose. Nice to say, not easy to do. Typically, one way we wanted to tackle it at the Dassault system is questioning exactly what will be just the right solution for architects, designers, makers, innovators to actually basically do better. Um, and the first thing is how we can effectively analyze what's going on. I think Carlo Ratti earlier was showing that with the data being a data viz, with the visualization of data, the way those data are being basically uh, being placed with each other. It's a good way to analyze, analyze what's going on, but also beyond the evaluation, you need to basically design strategies. And this is also another way, how we will be just leveraging technology to design just new uh, proposition. And to do so, uh, we believe always that we have four main pillars that we want to converge. We want to make a convergence of what we know as a disparate element of the physical and the digital. Everything coming from nature, particle, anything that we know are quite fuzzy and difficult to grasp. Like, I don't know, just the, f the function of the brain. Uh, how the humans basically interact with this. But also the data, I talk about that. 
And yes, yes, if we don't have any business logic in the purpose, well, we will be just talking to ourselves because this has to lead to some kind of economical balance. Balance, not growth. So, design for life means designing for meaning. And no meaning, no reason to live. Actually, uh, I remember a digression, it's a little digression, but uh, people always think that uh, uh, we need to go to the notion of we don't need to, to live better, we need to have a reason that is worth living. So, uh, in the age of experience, uh, designers are no more designing product. They are designing experience. Okay, experience within the social system means how we basically interact with technology. But it's also about our living experience, how we as humans are basically interacting with the world. And what I believe, and that's what we want to share to you for discussion, that it's probably the era of the new designer, an emerging model where the design is not a dogmatic artist sitting behind his notebook sketching beautiful shape. No, the designer is probably a core team of interdisciplinary people looking at all of those aspects of designing life. Actually, the hackathon earlier is a very good example of that. There are also another designer that is emerging, a designer that will be not staying in the era of art, but a designer that will be basically embracing science, embracing technology like uh, data optimization, designing with data, or computational design, or even further, generative design, anything that is maybe seen as optimization coming from the engineering field, but could be completely relevant for design purposes. And I think Kengo Kuma installation right here is just a perfect example. If you are designing the archetype of what you are really meaning to do, then technology can enable you to do it. And better than any try and test your design process will have done. The new making landscape is also changing quite a lot the position of the designers. In a lot of companies, there are design departments that are being challenged by Fab Labs. Well, I don't think this will last. Fab Labs is a great trickling, testing, experimental place to, to look at maybe different ways to basically, uh, like kids, you know, try to touch what this new technology and capacities can offer. But we still need to have some people who think at large. So we cannot just make this as a, a discard moment, but these are basically creating a completely new type of designers. We call it makers, but maybe they are more than that. For this, we have the 3D Experience platform. For some of you, you had a chance to see it in the playground. The 3D Experience platform is just based on one belief. The belief that we don't need only tools. We need to basically secure virtual and real environment, place where interdisciplinarity will happen, place where people will be building incredible things, leveraging the expertise from people that they have not used to work with, but will be just going much beyond just the sample sketch or form. This is what I believe in the digital age. The designer is no longer designing the object but its archetype, it means its structure, what is behind, the invisible. So, designing experience uh, for us is clearly designing centered with the human, but it's also considering the innovation making and having this permanent iteration between the two. But I would like to add two key elements to build up on that. One is to model imaginaries. Um, we have put some intensive research around this idea that if you want to design with the virtual, if you want to create virtual universe that allow you to basically project future setting for design purposes, well, imaginaries are going to be at the heart of it. Why? It's beyond value. It's because it's getting into our reptilian brain. It gets into our strong layering of cultural interaction we have since our early age in life. So, imaginary are absolutely necessary for us to basically create the adoption and play with data. Clearly, this is a material for design. 
So within DASO system, we have imagining a possibility to design with system. So we know that most of what we are doing right now is system of systems. So what we want to imagine is how we can just provide data visualization solution that will basically bridge system engineers and designers to design system of system. What you see, by the way, on the left is a system of system that has been designed for the purpose of just one vehicle on the urban mobility proposition, but taking into account all of the aspects of the experience. And on the right, maybe it's a little disclosure of a product that will be coming, uh, enabling people to design with system at the level of an experience or services or, all the, or embracing all of the stakeholders of the experience. So, because what we are aiming to, well, typically, taking all of the layering of what it takes to build an experience and be able to play it within the 3D experience city. Actually, you have a, a great example right uh, behind these walls. So, we can play scenarios of the future. We can test it. There are nothing more sustainable than the ability to actually try and test that is really at the heart of the design process and visualize it before anything gets done in real life. This virtual plus air social and immersive and simulation platform will enable any designer starting from design thinking to actually achieve that full life cycle of an idea. And this is the only way to think for green. So uh, I like to call it design futuring. Actually, you can go and check design futuring. I'm a good fan of this uh, uh, scholar in Australia called Johnny Fry. He's the one who came up with this. Why not design future, right? I'm going to explain. Futuring is an action. I'm not uh, like uh, you are a UK uh, uh, person. You know, I'm French. But to me, futuring means, as I always learn, you are in action. You are futuring something. And design futuring means you are designing action dynamically. You are not just designing an object. Like the future is not an object. It's not a still thing. It's an evolving dynamic um, proposition. And we need to engage the emotion. So that's what we like to do, is keeping this cross dialogue between the emotion and what we are imagining. Because the, our intent is very simple. We want to bridge any designers, makers, innovators that have all the ideas of the world with the audience. That means the people would be using those technology or those incredible crazy ideas. So if you don't bridge those two, I think we will never, never succeed. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.